The National Dialogue Commission calls groups engaged in armed conflict to stop fighting unconditionally and come to the round table. And also this hour, Tanzania promotes investment in manufacturing. Hello and welcome to ABC World. I'm Asked Omadnav with the hour's latest. Deputy Prime Minister Thomas Gunturuna received and held a discussion with Jamie Cooper, chairperson and president of a big philanthropy, along with her delegation. The discussion centered on the implementation of the Sakota Declaration and fostering existing cooperation in various areas. Both sides expressed their commitment to strengthening existing collaborations and exploring new avenues for partnership. In a social media post, the Deputy Prime Minister Thomas Gantoruna acknowledged the significant work carried out by Big Win Philanthropy in Ethiopia, particularly in the fields of agriculture, education, job creation, and poverty alleviation. He commended the Foundation's efforts and expressed optimism about furthering their joint initiatives. Furthermore, the discussions are focused on expanding the scope of cooperation beyond the current areas of engagement. Ethiopian Minister of Foreign Affairs Tayyaz Gasalase Comfort was the Minister of International Development of Canada, Ahmed Hussein, on Monday. On the occasion, Ambassador Tayyaz Gasalase stated that Ethiopia values its long standing and vibrant relationship with Canada. The two sides discussed a variety of topics, including areas of cooperation in the DDR process and addressing regional issues of common concern according to Foreign Affairs Ministry. Ethiopia and Development Partners Group held a joint meeting to emphasize the need for improved collaboration and operational partnerships to transform food systems and enhance nutrition on a larger scale nationwide. During the meeting, Minister of Agriculture Girma Venti highlighted the shared vision of transforming Ethiopian food systems and nutrition, emphasizing their crucial role as the lifeblood of the nation, a major source of employment, livelihoods, and cultural heritage. Minister of Finance Ahmed Shade also underscored the multi-sectoral nature of the food system and nutrition agenda in Ethiopia, calling for interventions that go beyond the specific sectors. He expressed optimism about Ethiopia's progress in producing key agricultural products such as wheat, maize and rice, indicating that the country is on the right track for further advancement. In addition, Minister of Health Dr. Magnus Daba, as part of the Food Nutrition Strategy under Sakota Declaration Implementation, highlighted the Ministry of Agriculture's efforts to strengthen the regional coordination platform.
The Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission says it's doing its best to facilitate inclusive dialogue in which fair and reasonable representations take place. Talking to ABC World's Weekly Addis Dialogue, Yonas Adai, Commissioner of the Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission, underscored the need for armed groups to lay down their arms and come to the negotiating table. According to the commissioner, the selection of representatives is completed in 10 regions and two city administrations, except Amhara and Tigray. Johannes Van Town has the details. Inclusive national dialogue plays a vital role in fostering sustainable peace and nationwide unity for several reasons. Inclusive dialogue ensures that all segments of society are represented, including marginalized groups such as minorities, women, indigenous people and the youth. When all voices are heard and considered, it fosters a sense of belonging and ownership in the peace process, reducing the likelihood of exclusion and resentment. Ethiopia has been engaged in a nationwide dialogue for the realization of sustainable peace through all-inclusive dialogue. Speaking to Addis Dialogue, Commissioner Jonas Adaye said the Commission is doing its level best to meet its objectives. It's been doing its level best so as to meet the following national objectives. One is bringing about um, national consensus. And the second one is building trust between state and society. And thirdly, making dialogue a culture of this country. So these are major, major objectives. Dialogue provides a platform for different stakeholders to express their grievances, concerns and aspirations in a peaceful and constructive manner. By addressing underlying grievances and building mutual understanding, trust can be established among conflicting parties laying the foundation for sustainable peace. Addressing conflicting parties, the Commissioner called upon civilized approach for conflict resolution, expressing the Commission's commitment to make the dialogue out of Ethiopia and include trusted external parties. My first message goes to my brothers and sisters in the fight. This is your country. And the sign of civilization really is settling differences through debates, discussions, and dialogue. So please come without any condition to the national dialogue. We'll be very happy wherever you, even you want us to go. We, we can come there, we can facilitate. It could be in the third country. If you feel insecure to, to conduct it in Ethiopia, we'll be very happy also through trusted third parties such as the Red Cross, which we already have contacted, and we, of course in constant communication as well. So peace by peaceful means should be our political culture. That is my invitation to my brothers and sisters in, in the fighting field particularly. How long should we lose you know, our young generation? Shouldn't we give them hope? And you know, the engine of life is hope. Without hope, life is questionable, meaningless, to be honest. With the exception of Amhara and Tigway, the commissioner claims that the selection of delegates has been completed in 10 regions and two city administrations. Agriculture being the Ethiopian main state of its economy, the country has formulated and adopted various policies and strategies aimed at achieving higher productivity. Over the past few years, the agriculture production has shown growth even in the desert areas due to application of technologies such as irrigation. Enhancing agricultural productivity in rural and in urban areas is a key instrument to solve food insecurity. Habtam Mwashagri is here to tell us more. Three years back, this place was a damp site, most of it being swampy. But thanks to relentless efforts, it has now been turned into one of the greenest areas in the region. Located in Galan subsidy of the newly built Sugar City, urban agriculture is bearing fruits here. The initiative has helped boost agricultural activity, thereby balancing the ecosystem to live. Talking to this English, residents of the area said urban agriculture is crucial for the lives of the region by enhancing agricultural products. <laughs> 
The effort implied to turn this dump site into a lush green area is commendable. Being a west yard, it used to store lots of dirt, not to mention dead animal bodies. What happened to it in three years, thanks to the help rendered by a philanthropist came as a miracle. Urban agriculture is paying dividends. During those years, this area was a garbage dump, heavy flood hit us hard. A locally led philanthropist funded effort to clean up trash, provide this model for successful community regeneration over and above boosting agriculture. It's a guy in Dafrash who must mind this cleanup and urban farmland in Sherim. For his part said he can turn the gorge and dump area by cultivating plants, fruits and vegetables in this area. Ethiopia's Go Green initiative, which our Prime Minister has prohibited, is a model I'll always abide by. It has helped us reap surplus production. Thanks to this model, food security efforts are gathering up speed. The Glan Subsidy Agriculture Office retweeted that it stands ready to ramp up the initiative and provide further agricultural inputs aiming to promote agri investors to register achievements. We are using this farmland as an example for every farmer in this area. We have provided training to farmers to help them replicate this effort and bring them to see how this farmland works. We extend our support to agri investors. Task as agriculture expert, we bring 36 kilo warm compost from Gooder Town to enhance agriculture productivity. Now we are reproducing this warm compost force in this farmland and providing it to other farmers in this region. The farmland beams with various agricultural plants like sugarcane, avocado, sunflower, olivera, mango, banana, coffee, papaya and many other fruits. Tanzania has been incentivizing new entrants into the manufacturing sector with reduced corporate tax rates aiming to stimulate business activity and economic growth. Tanzanians' president promotes investment in manufacturing. Tegisar Nasa tells us more. Tanzania is striving to boost its manufacturing sector. Tanzanian manufacturer Saturn assembles Chinese Sino truck Huo trucks. The plant has already built 150 trucks since it started in March and has created 250 direct and 1,800 indirect jobs. The president says the state of the facility not only represents a significant leap in local manufacturing capabilities, but also a strategic move to make Tanzania a hub for industrialization in East Africa. We must not let all the products be made in other countries. We send them our raw materials and then they make the goods and grow their economies while providing livelihoods for their people. We no longer want that kind of economy. We now want to manufacture locally because we have raw materials and we will grow our sector. The company used to distribute the Chinese trucks but recently brought the assembly to Tanzania. It has forged relationships with Chinese partners to ensure the local workforce is trained in the latest manufacturing technologies. Winmart Group's expansion into manufacturing, especially the assembly of certain Sino truck, demonstrate their dedication to the development of the automotive industry in Tanzania. The venture will not only provide quality vehicles, but also contribute to the country's overall infrastructure and transportation sector. The manufacturing sector has shown a steady growth over the years, registering an 8.3 annual growth rate in 2023 and accounting for 8.1 percent of GDP. The Tanzanian Investment Center is an agency that handles local and foreign investment registration. Last year, it recorded 237 projects in the manufacturing sector. Jilly Terry, who hates the center, says Tanzania is on the road to becoming a manufacturing powerhouse. These manufacturers will be producing not only for domestic market, which means there is a huge market within the country, but also as part of the East African community and the Southern African development market. The message to investors out there in the world is if you set up in Tanzania, you are able to enjoy 
uh, a market of close to 400 million people. Tanzania's leap into manufacturing marks a significant milestone in its economic development story, with companies like Saturn Sinotrack Assembly factory leading the charge is paving the way for a brighter and more industrious economy. Well, that account was taken from CGTN, and on that note, I'll bring today's news bulletin to an end. Before that, let me now remind you of the stories of the hour. The National Dialogue Commission calls groups engaged in armed conflict to stop fighting unconditionally and come to the round table.